Um, merci Sherry D for inviting me. Um, I'm going to do one poem from uh, uh, soon to be released. Actually, I've, it's only been in my hands for a day and a half. A uh, CD book called Hyena Subpoena. I, I get, thank you. I guess, I guess I'll do the, the title track. Um, uh, a few years ago, in 2007, I was invited to a poetry festival in Cape Town in South Africa, and it was really the trip of a lifetime for somebody like me, uh, who is really interested in wildlife. We spent a couple of months in, uh, in the Kruger Park there, which is a huge national park the size of a country in itself, and uh, you can just drive around in a lousy rental car looking out the window at, you know, leopards in the trees and herds of Cape buffalo and hyenas. I was particularly inspired by hyenas. Um, they're, they've got kind of a bad reputation in terms of the animal, you know, in terms of animals in general. Um, and that interests me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at preambles, I feel, so I'm just going to go into the poem. It's called Hyena, Subpoena, um, what else do you need to know? Not much. I'll just go for it. If I could be a hybrid species, here's what I would be. A creature who's one half hyena and one half me. And should I be called to testify upon my own behalf? I'd take the stand and be sworn in, then laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> language of the Bornu region of Western Africa. The word for hyena, bultu, connotes one who is unsettled, does not remain in one state, an individual who vacillates between strength and weakness. Hyena are even able to shift between sexes as well as from human to hyena form. The verb bultongen signifying I transform myself into a hyena. <laughs> There's said to be an entire town or two who can do it. A formidable ability considering hyena notoriety both proverbially as well as in popular mythology. The public image of hyena is generally not very pretty because neither according to many is the hyena with its tragic mouths and down sloped eyes, ursine lumbering and slobbering like a zombie Saint Bernard, mournful looking as the mug of Goya's Kronos. But according to a proverb of the Hausa tribe, every fault is laid at the door of the hyena, though it does not steal a bale of cloth. The tongue of the hyena is barbed like the tongue of a cat. Some human beings are surprised by that because they suppose hyena more resemble dogs than cats when in fact they are neither of those. Most closely related to meerkats and mongoose, hyena constitute their very own family. Hyena day, order carnivora, genus and species crocuta crocuta, named after a mythical wolf dog with supernaturally powerful teeth and instantaneous digestion, which lured dogs and men to their doom, assuming a human voice and calling them by name, feigning the identity of a loved one in distress just beyond that clump of shrubbery. <laughs> Not such a trustworthy namesake to be saddled with. A little like naming someone low down snake in the grass or something like that. Rather stacking the odds against social success. And so yes, nobody loves a hyena. They're carrion eaters, grave robbers, shapeshifters, liars and cheaters with a bad reputation for repugnant gustation. This in addition to being cowards and scavengers, demons and enemies of the church overturning sepulchers and devouring the corpses of innocent converts. Furthermore, hyena are sexual perverts, known whores and hermaphrodites. Chicks with dicks who can switch at will which sexy bits they wish to copulate with. They operate within the mythical dimension, with intentions that are shifty and shady, always changing from one thing to another, not entirely stable. You might almost feel sorry for the poor guys, but bear in mind the Monty proverb which reminds, it's never wise to show a hyena how well you can bite. <laughs>
Hyena, hyena, cattle of night. Courser of witches with lanterns alight, burning hyena butter. Anal glandular putty ruck up against branches in two tones like tiger bomb, red and white. Gathered by witches and gourds to light their course, then mounting hyena take flight onto the astral plane to do nuisance there. Hyena, hyena, cattle of night. Courser of witches with lanterns alight, burning hyena butter. Gathered in gourds to light their course, here the hyena is bringer of lights. With eyes open wide and a fine set of canines, hyena cubs come into the world via the so-called pseudo-penis of their mothers. In fact, an elongated clitoris of identical dimension to the male apparatus, making labor a particularly arduous process, but still downright impressive and not well understood why the females are packing in the hyena sisterhood. <laughs> Laughers, that maniacal cackle which screws with you station tubes, haunting the hearer ad nauseum like some kind of voodoo tinnitus. Now a crying baby, then suddenly a crazy lady really makes you wonder what hyena finds so funny. Unless, unless that laugh is a call to bear witness to some shift in emphasis from general culpability to a clearer analysis of how maybe you've been lied to by the same set of standards as has tried to define you. From symbol of depravity to source of light and clarity, what hyena best exemplifies is that which can't be quantified, like natural science before Wallace and Darwin, a curiosity cabinet resisting easy definition. If I could be a hybrid species, here's what I'd be. A creature who's half hyena and half me. And when I'm called to testify upon my own behalf, I'll take the stand and be sworn in and laugh and laugh and laugh. Meanwhile, the profile emerges of hyena as scavenger, despite that they're equally talented hunters. Indeed, it may be lions do the lion's share of scavenging. If we tally who steals whose kill most frequently, the lions have a better public image, shall we say. So as explained in a proverb of Swahili, the leavings of the lion are welcome to the hyena. So the truth is, hyena are just better eaters. Seriously, they're marvels of digestive efficiency. Hyena feces is as white as chalk and dry as rye, Vita. I seen it. You could probably draw a hopscotch on the sidewalk with that shit. <laughs> Enzymes in their digestive tracts can extract blood from a stone with tooth and jaw designed to grind bone. Not a narrow like a marrow left unscoured. Nothing going to waste. It kind of brings back happy memories of your anarchist squatter days in East Vancouver in the yeah. late 80s. Scavenger was never a bad word, it was what you aspired to be. Diving into dumpsters in the parking lot behind Safeway, they could pretty well feed all 38 squatters and what the supermarket chucked out every day. And can it really be stealing if the lions already abandoned it and walked away? And when Safeway started putting padlocks on the dumpsters, wasn't that pretty much sour grapes? So you went similarly out of your way to subsist on the waste of society because you didn't want to pay for what it pandered. And in six abandoned houses, the squatters took up residence, hooked up phone and power just like regular citizens, and petitioned the city to save those perfectly livable bungalows from demolition. Instead of throwing up still more fancy condos for which not a soul in the whole neighborhood had the dough. The point wasn't solely to draw attention to the plight of the homeless. It was to avoid joining them. But when Greta and Enid saw squatters on the evening news, she refused to accept that any relation of hers could fall in with people like those long hairs, political radicals, unwed mothers. Couldn't they settle into proper jobs instead of cluttering up the steps of City Hall? And Enid had worked as an office clerk her entire life, but it never hurt her any. But you do have a job, you tell Great Aunt Enid, and this is aside from rescuing perfectly edible fruits and vegetables from landfills. You also work in the stainless steel, steamy industrial kitchen of a fancy hotel downtown, where they chucked out enough food every night to feed a crowd. Food which no employee was even allowed to salvage, at least not officially, which is why some rules are not meant to be paid attention to. <laughs> And you arrange to be the one who takes out the trash at the end of the night, dash to a phone booth, and call up a certain United Church on the downtown east side, a neighborhood where homeless persons often line the curb like that ridge of dust at the edge of the pan, which never gets swept up quite. And you 
wait in the back alley for the minister's black Mariah with headlights dimmed, and you deliver the food bins to him, carefully stacked in garbage bags, a flat of mashed potatoes and carrots, tray of Boston creams, or whatever it happens to be, which breach of legality the good folks of the downtown church are only too happy to recycle into meals for local people, the broke, the addicted, and mentally ill, helping keep body and soul together another night. Because we might as well admit it, most folks don't love the homeless anymore. Then they'd love to see a family of hyena move in next door. They likely have lice or worse, homelessness may be contagious like some economic virus. Best not even look at a homeless person. You find yourself suddenly flat on your ass and addicted to crack at the corner of poverty and despair and then you die there. But hope springs eternal in darkened doorways and shrubberies. The more dire the fight for survival, the greater the necessity for levity, which must be why they call it making light. If I could be a hybrid species, here's what I'd be. A creature who's half hyena and half me. And when I'm called to testify upon my own behalf, I'll take the stand and be sworn in and laugh and laugh and laugh. And laugh and laugh and laugh. Cheers. Thank you. Peace.